Okay, so in this example, we're going to have to use the quadratic formula in order to solve this word problem. And it says a ball thrown from a height of 60 feet can be modeled by, and then they give us this quadratic here, right? And it says h of t. So what this represents is height is a function of time, meaning on your x-axis, time is being graphed. That's your input, right? And on the y-axis, height is being graphed. That's your output. Okay, so we have our quadratic here, and it says, at what time does the ball hit the ground? And it says, round your answer to the nearest hundred. So we want to know what time does the ball hit the ground. So again, time is being graphed on the x-axis. So you can kind of picture it like this. Let's just say we have a quadratic, and we know in this case it's going to be opening downward since this is negative, our a is negative. So you could just say, okay, you'll have something like this, right? So we want to know the time that it hits the ground. So here it is being thrown, right, from a height of 60 feet. We want to know this part right here. At what time is it going to hit the ground? So in order to do this, you're going to be solving for the zeros, which we can use the quadratic formula for. Again, the zeros are just where the quadratic is crossing the x-axis. That's all it means. So in this case, we're going to use the quadratic formula. So let's go ahead and write that out. So the quadratic formula, in case you forgot, is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of, and then we have b squared minus 4 times a times c, all over 2 times a. We should also write out a quadratic in standard form, as this will help us as we go through the problem. And that's going to be the following, ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay? So, let's get into this problem. I'm just going to go ahead and erase this, and we can start finding the zeros. Right, so to do that, we're going to plug it right into our quadratic formula, so we get x equals. Now my b, so I need to go back to my quadratic, which is right here, so this is a, this is b, and this is c. So my b is 8, when I plug it in, it's negative 8, plus or minus the square root of and we can do this part in our head, right? B squared, that's 8 squared, so that's going to give me 64. So I'm going to put 64 here, minus 4 times A, which is going to be negative 2, right? And then times C, which is going to be 60, okay? This is all going to be over 2 times A. In other words, 2 times a negative 2, all right? So let's go ahead and clean up what we have underneath our square root here. So we get x equals negative 8 plus or minus the square root of. And what we can do is simply just plug this into our calculator in order to figure out what this is going to be. So when we do this, we get 544. Okay. And this is going to all be over negative 4. Okay, so from here, we want to go ahead and try to simplify the radical, so our square root here, if possible. So we have the square root of 544, and we're going to do this by using prime factorization. So I need two numbers when I multiply, will give me 544. And just plugging this into my calculator, I get 32 and 17. Now 17 is prime, so we're done there. With 32, we can use 8 and 4. This breaks down to 2 and 2. This breaks down to 4 and 2. And this breaks down to 2 and 2. So we're looking for pairs that we can pull out. So I have a pair here of 2s. That means a 2 can come out. I have another pair here. So another 2 can come out. And what's going to stay underneath the radical is the following. You have this 2 and this 17. So when you pull this out, it really looks like this. You have 2 times 2. And then underneath the square root, you're going to have 2 times 17. Okay, so when you do this, you get 4 square root of 34. Okay, so what we're going to do is just go ahead and rewrite this. So we're going to get the following. You get x equals minus 8 plus or minus 4 square root of 34 all over negative 4. Okay, and so from here we can go ahead and just simplify this down. We're going to get two zeros here, so we get x equals negative 8 plus 4 
square root of 34 all over negative 4 and then we get x equals negative 8 minus 4 square root of 34 all over negative 4. Now you have two zeros here. Only one of them is going to represent your answer. So remember we're talking about time, okay? So I can't have a negative time. So one of these zeros is going to end up being negative and that's not going to be the answer. So you want to pick your positive zero here, okay? So remember go back to that sketch that we drew at the beginning. We're looking for the zero that's furthest to the right, okay? In this case, we're looking for the positive zero. One of these is going to end up being negative. So what we're going to do is plug this into our calculator and determine which zero we're going to pick for our answer. So let's go ahead and just erase this here. And what I'm going to do is just plug each one of these into our calculator to determine what we get. Okay, so when we plug this first one in, you're going to get the following. And again, we're going to round it to the nearest hundred. We get negative 3.83 and this will be seconds, right? Okay, so we already know that that's not going to be our answer, right? So we're not going to use that one. Let's go ahead and plug this one in. And when we plug this in, again, we're going to round it to the nearest hundredth, we get 7.83, and this is going to be in seconds. Okay, so this is going to be our answer right here. Okay, again, this zero here is going to be irrelevant. We're looking at this one here, it's the positive one. So the time it's going to take for this ball to hit the ground is going to be 7.83 seconds. Okay, and that is it.